Welcome to my channel, this is Mario Lord, also known as Real Estate Guru PK. On this channel, we talk about my real estate endeavors. We also have the top real estate producers and the top entrepreneurs in the country. Be sure to click the link below with Justin P with his Support Black Colleges marketing course. Also with Jason White's Crack the Code affiliate link, click that below as well. Also to support the channel, Weeble and One Finance, Chase Discover Robinhood and Public a stock trading app. We hope you enjoyed this episode. This is Real Estate Guru PK signing up. How y'all doing? Welcome to another episode. We got a special guest. <laughs> I don't know. You, you the man here. <laughs> nah, you the man. Um, so how you been? Been good, man. I'm just glad to be um, part of this, man. I know we met a while ago and oh. you said you got to come on the podcast. So here I am. I'm just blessed to be here. How, how was it like the... Um, Interviewing the players after the champ after the World Series, man. You know, um, so after the Astros won the World Series, man, that was just is one of those things where you just kind of got to go grab people. Mm -hmm. uh, there's there's no sort of plan. Um, my, you know, the, some of the players wanted to talk, some didn't. Some wanted to celebrate first. Some wanted to do it, uh, but it was just fun to be out there on the field in such a big moment for Houston. So uh, that was definitely one of the highlights of last year uh, on the World Series stage after they won. You was in a parade, right? You was in a parade. No, I didn't do the parade. I just did the actual uh, World Series win. So after they won the big celebration when everybody comes on the field and, uh, you know, all the players are spraying champagne and their families are out there. So, you know, I was a part of that celebration. Yeah, I saw you on. I saw you out there. Yeah, that was cool. Um, So I usually ask all my guests about like their journey to how they got to to in their career. So like you, we spoke previously about, mm -hmm. you know, your father, you know, having a big um helping you out throughout your process? Yeah, so, you know, I, I started out, like, at seven years old wanting to be a news anchor, and I know some people think that's crazy. Mm. Uh, you know, you know, you, you knew what you wanted to do at seven years old, but I actually did, and so uh, I told my dad at a young age, like, this is what I want to do, and um, my parents both, my mom and dad, saw fit to kind of make sure I was in the right spaces to do what I, you know, could do. Uh, so they took me to the news station at a young age. Uh, I would always watch the the broadcast when I was younger um, every day, like literally a six or seven year old coming home and watching the news, uh, just learning, uh, listening, um, curious about everything. And so went to school, uh, facilitated, uh, you know, my career through, you know, working at the local news station uh, in Auburn, where I went to school at Auburn University and just yearbook staff in high school, everything. So it kind of led up to where I am now. And my parents made sure that, you know, I was in a space to be able to do that. You was grinding for like years, right? Before you finally got a shot at being the weather guy. Yeah. Well, how, how was that process? Well, actually, yeah, I, I, um, I pretty much, I'm a, a local news anchor, so I don't really do the weather as much. I mean, we kind of interact with the weather people, yeah. but um, for me, it's it's the news. Um, yeah. So, um, you know, I, I worked, like I said, worked my way up, started in a small market, worked in Augusta, Georgia, then worked in Nashville, Tennessee, New Orleans, and then got the shot to come here to Houston. So I think a lot of people, they see people on TV and they think, oh man, you know, that'd be a cool job. But like I said, this started for me at like seven years old, uh, practicing with my dad's camcorder and, and being on the yearbook staff and doing the morning announcements in middle school. So it's really a process uh, that sometimes people don't understand. Who, who taught you how, who taught you about financial literacy? Financial literacy. Okay, so I was telling you earlier, um, my dad is a CPA. And mm -hmm. so uh, my dad um, always would, you know, tell me about money, saving money. And I, I think I told you earlier, you know, I grew up in Atlanta, Georgia, um, where, you know, a lot of black folks have money. Mm -hmm. And uh, my parents did well for themselves. And I remember growing up uh, when all the, you know, people in my neighborhood were going and getting a big house and getting the big cars. My dad was like, no, 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 our house is paid for, you know, we're going to save our money. I want you guys to, you know, be good in the future. And so uh, he always taught us about saving saving, uh, you know, investing and setting up our legacy for the future. And so I kind of got that from a young age. Okay. So what um, started, like, how, how do you, like, when you first start working, like, as far as like your salary goes, do you negotiate that or, or is that like automatic, like, you're only going to get paid this amount? Well, generally in news, you know, it's, it's kind of like you work your way up by market. You know, you start in a small market. Like I said, I started in Augusta, Georgia. Mm -hmm. And I think, man, this was like many years ago. I was making like 30 grand a, a year. This was like my very first job out of college. So again, like, you know, no experience, but then you work your way up and, and it's all based on your value and your position. Um, so yeah, it's usually something you can negotiate based on your value and, and the market size itself. Okay. So, so, what do you see yourself like, say, like in five years, like, like moving up 
like in on the totem pole? Like, where do you see yourself? Well, you know, I've been able to work really hard in the last, um, you know, five years or so to work up to, I guess, what you consider like the top anchor position. Mm. You know, I'm in Houston. Houston's a, a considered a top 10 market. So I've been able to work my way up uh, and do that. Uh, and I've been blessed to do that. But I, I think in the next five years, I see myself doing a lot more behind the scenes. I've never been one of those guys who had to be on camera all the time. Like I got to be on TV every day. Um, I also enjoy the production aspect of it as well and doing stuff in the community. So for me, um, I want to just continue some of the initiatives I've started here in Houston, but also do stuff on on camera, but also off camera as well. What got you in the, in the fitness? I know we talked about that. Like what, what was like, what made you go so hard in, in being that guy in fitness? Man, so um, I started uh, playing basketball when I was really young. Uh, my dad made us play sports. Yeah, he told us, he told us, he said, you're going to play one sport. Mm. He said, pick a sport. Um, and so, uh, you know, we all were tall and so we all played basketball. But um, I played sports and was active all throughout my life, uh, high school, middle school. And then when I got to college, I just started working out. And uh, for me, I know you work out as well some. And, and, you know, I always tell people working out is a part of mental health. It really is for me. Like yeah. my weeks don't go right they don't go well unless i've had my workouts and um and also to me it's just giving me a, a something to discipline myself by i always tell people if you can get in the gym three or four days a week you can work out um that's discipline and that shows people you know when you walk in a room that you know you can start something you can finish something you can discipline yourself and um, so, yeah, fitness for me is a big part of my life. And I also tell people this is that, you know, fitness, you may have think about this from even a money perspective. Fitness is one of the only things that you can't you can't buy. Think okay. about it. You can go and you can inherit money. Um, you can win the lottery overnight and buy a bunch of clothes and cars and houses. But fitness, you got to get in the gym every day and work for it. So um, it's really a, an investment in yourself um, that only you can do and only you can you know take the time to do. Got to say, wealth, wealth is he health is wealth. Health is wealth. Health is wealth. Yeah. So that, that's that's what I that's what I say. What what position did you play in basketball? So I played in the post, even though uh, you know I'm not the oh. biggest guy. I was down at uh, forward, um, but among the guys I played with in school, I was one of the biggest and tallest. So um, you know I played down in the, the post position and um, kind of was down there. Um, yeah, that, that's I did that at least in you know middle school and high school. I didn't play collegiate. Did you did you want to be a basketball player or, or being in news was always the goal? Man, basketball, I enjoy playing. I was never the best on the team. I was good, but I was never the best. And I never saw it as a uh, ticket, you know, to anything. I never I saw it as like something to do um, as a, you know, extracurricular activity. But I always wanted to be a news anchor. I mean, my parents can tell you since I was probably seven or eight years old. I was obsessed with the news anchors on TV. I thought they were the biggest celebrities. I knew everything that was going on in the city of Atlanta. And so by the time I got to like college, I was, I, you know, I, I didn't care about any other organizations. I just wanted to be anything that was going to help me get to my career. I was focused on that. You're like really, really well spoken. Um, do you see yourself like running for president or being like the governor or something like that? Nah, man, I don't even, I, I like politics. But I've never been one of those people who saw myself wanting to run for office. I just like kind of being on the ground, doing what I do in the community. I feel like you can, you know, be effective and make change just by, you know, doing stuff in your own community. I do a lot of stuff here in Houston. And that's really where I, I like to sort of lay my my footprint, not necessarily running for office. OK, what what what? um. You mentioned like giving back to the communities. What what are you involved with as far as giving back to the community in Houston? Yeah, so I moved to Houston about six years ago and I started uh, actually several organizations. Um, one of them that a lot of people know about is called Beyond the Game. Mm. And it's to inspire young men of color to dream big beyond sports. We talked about that. Like, you know, a lot of our young men, they see sports or they see music or other things as their uh, limitations. And so what we do is we go around to different schools. I've been to, man, most of the inner city um, high schools, a lot of the middle schools in the last few years. And we just expose them to people like you, people like me who are doing things that are positive and who, you know, had other routes or took other routes besides sports. So, um, I mean, I've had everybody from Vince Young to Matthew Knowles mm. uh, to different businessmen around the community, real estate people just come in and say, hey, look, you can play sports you know, be great at sports, but also, you know, not just have a backup plan, but we want to expose them to other people who look like them who are doing great things. And that's what it's all about. So we do that. And then I also have um, 
another a couple of other initiatives, uh, Sweat TX, uh, which is, you know, encouraging our young people to get active. A lot of people don't know that Houston has one of the um, worst childhood obesity issues wow. in the country. In yeah. The whole, in the whole country? Well, yeah. One in three children in Houston is considered obese. Mm -hmm. And so um, a lot of people don't know about that. And, and so we it, the goal is just to get our kids more active and moving. So I partner with the uh, mayor's office and the Parks and Recreation Department uh, to get um, some programs started. And, and I've gone around to schools. I had to kind of stop because of COVID, of course, a lot of things stopped. But the goal is really to get back geared up um, and promote health and promote wellness. Because like I said, I mean, that's what's important. You know, money is important, but actually being able here to be here and be healthy and enjoy your money and enjoy your life is is equally important. That's really, really cool. Um, like, as far as your investments goes, like, do you are you investing in stocks or, or in real estate? You know, I've man, the stock market right now is just crazy. So, yeah, I mean, man, I, I was looking at my account the other day. I said, <laughs> man, you know, but, you know, yeah, so I have some uh, stock investments. You know, I kind of put a lot of my investments in a lot of these electric vehicle companies that are kind of still struggling. Like Tesla? Uh, you know, I, I, Tesla is, is cool. I have a little Tesla stock, but I've been looking at some of the, you know, more up and coming ones like um, Rivian. Lucid, Rivian. Yeah. Um, I've also... Uh, um, Polestar, some of those other ones, uh, which I think, of course, will be the future. But right now, you know, still trying to get off the ground. And then I have just some real estate investments uh, with my brothers. Like I have two brothers back home in Atlanta. And so we have some property um, and then some stuff, you know, um, just with our family. But that's about it. Oh, that's dope. Yeah, man. So I just my dad's really been my dad always really preached. Um you know, togetherness with my brothers, like us staying together, but also just making sure we invested, like I said, in stuff that actually would have longevity and not just, you know, into the material things. I'm sure you're probably the same way, you know, just it's cool to have, you know, some nice clothes and cars, mm -hmm. but like make sure you got something to set up for your family first. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Like so like so family is really, really important to you. Yeah, man. You know, um, I grew up, uh, like I said, in Atlanta with my two brothers um, and my mom and my dad, um, you know, grew up in um you know, with aunts and uncles all around me. So we still, like I told you, I went back for New Year's. I was back for Christmas. They come here, you know, it's, it's really important, I think, especially as we all get older, just to keep that family unit together. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that, that's that's big for me, so. So what what's like your like five to 10 year plan, like besides being like behind the scenes, like at the, at the news, like you trying to be like the CEO or? or? Oh, nah, man. I, I don't have a goal to be, uh, you know, I enjoy what I do. I enjoy working at Fox 26. I enjoy being a news anchor. But, you know, I, there's other goals I have, too. You know, like I said, I, I really want to continue to take my platform uh, with health and wellness um, and do some things with that. That's kind of one of my goals even this year is to really take that um, out there and, and, and promote that even more. Um, but also, you know, just doing some more things, like I said, behind the scenes, investing. Um, I'm not a person, like I said, who has to be in front of the camera all the time. And I think that's a that's a good thing is that I tell people, you don't always have to be the person in front of the camera. Sometimes it's best to be behind the scenes, work your magic, let somebody else, you know, step out, promote mm -hmm. somebody else, uh, build somebody else up. That's sometimes where the, the opportunity and the money is actually. Okay. Um, is there anything else you want to talk about? Anything else you want um, to talk about? Yeah, you kind of went fast. You you went, you were like you went all over the place. He was going to, he was going to topic to topic. Um, well, yeah, I mean, I guess we could talk a little more about. It. I mean, because I I know you like to. I know a lot of this is you know a lot of people may not watch the whole thing. Yeah. So we may want to you know I know we want to make sure we have some good clips. Okay. Uh, for you to be well, able whatever to. you want to talk about, we could talk about. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think what else because I feel like uh <laughs> yeah you were hitting me. At, I was like, well, he going from this 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 um. But you know, um, let me think. I don't know. What what, what else you got? What else? What you think? Um, we we could talk about like the housing market in Houston, like you know how it's dropping right now. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, and like so maybe maybe I can ask you some questions too. We can kind okay. of make it a conversation, okay. and then we can get some out because I don't because I you know I, I know there's been a lot of talk about the housing market, and a lot of you know buyers are kind of holding out right now. Right. Um, you know, so I mean, what what would be your advice? I guess for, for people right now. For people right now, I'll, I'll be like, I'll tell them to buy and hold. Cause it's a renter's market. Like you're getting like 15, 14 to 1600 in, in like the hood, you know, the hoods, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So it's like I, last year, the last two years was like the ideal time to sell if you're trying to flip. But like right now, just buy and hold, like buy the mm -hmm. property as cheaply as possible and then just hold, you're going to get a nice little cash flow and then it's going to go right back up really soon. Yeah. yeah. Okay. They're, they're predicting like a recession next year or the next two years. So, I don't. It's not gonna fall like it like it did in two thousand eight because the the banks were lending like 
sub to subpar people and that's why it just fell on his face yeah it's, it's a tough time for a lot of people and you know i i feel like we've been in a recession you know in some ways for like the last year or so at least mm. at least if you look at the stock market mm. but i mean then you, as soon as you think it's bad and it gets worse it's worse, yeah. and it's worse and sometimes you wake up you're like man can it get any worse Man, I'm in the hole right now with my stocks. Oh yeah, I mean, I'm embarrassed to say how much right now. So. I, I am too. My, I'm, I'm the majority of everything is in Tesla, mm. and then I got Bitcoin and and Ethereum. And Bitcoin is, I mean, I remember when Bitcoin was at like 65. 68, 65, yeah. and then you wake up and it's like at 18, 17, 16, and, and some predicting it may go down to five. So I don't think it's gonna go to five. Um, people that are saying that they're just guessing. I, it's going back up though. Everything's going back up. Yeah, slowly, but then yeah, it's it's, it's still it's, it's sort of like a slow. But there'll be these rallies in the market, and then it'll be some bad news that kind of brings everybody back to reality. Every time Jay Powell talks, it, it cra he crashes the market because mm -hmm. like, he always is like giving some some good news, but with a concession. It's yeah. always like, yeah, things are looking better, but we ain't done yet. But he never says there's a recession, even though it's it's been. It's been dropping and dropping. He never, and then the 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 how I mean the the jobs is up. Mm -hmm. It's consistent. It's not dropping. We're not losing jobs. So it's like, I don't know what it is mm -hmm. to be honest with you. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, something else we we can talk about. I know you know we and I you and I talked about this on the phone yesterday. Is a little bit about you know sort of you know networking a little bit um, and okay. kind of building you know brand. And I and I was telling you uh, which kind of went to what we talked about here. Um, you know I'm a news anchor. But I'm also, you know, a person who promotes fitness. Um, I also do a little dancing on the side. I do mm -hmm. some investing on the side, as you mentioned as well. And I, I always tell people that's so important these days, like to have layers, uh, to not just be a real estate person, not just be a doctor or a lawyer. You know, you can be if you want to. But I think, you know, it's so important to have layers and have uh avenues of you that you know people can see because i remember when i first started uh, in the industry years ago it used to be like you needed to be one thing you needed to be this serious news anchor and that's all now people want to see more of your personality mm -hmm. they want to see what you do outside of work they want to see you on a t-shirt or at the gym and so i always tell people it's important to find those things and uh, that you're good at and and that you can showcase and don't be afraid to show them besides working out how do you cope with stress man um for me stress always one i um like you said, working out is a big part of that. Um, I limit um, just negativity. I told somebody the other day, even when it comes to, you know, uh, working out, I don't get up in the morning and start my day with social media. I don't start my day with television. Even though I work in television, I was like, nope, I'm not starting my day. I start with positive things, whether it's calling someone, saying something positive to myself, or just hitting the gym to turn on some inspirational music. So I, I think it's important to kind of just make sure you start your day with positivity and not allow negativity to creep in because so much of it is, is out there. Mm -hmm. how, to, how often, like when you go to the gym, how often do people go up to you and ask for like autographs and take pictures with you? Oh, no. Nah. I mean, you know, it's not like that. You know, I work out, like I work out in a uh, level one in um in third war <laughs> shout out to ken and all the folks over there um but actually you know slim thug works out over there and you'll see different athletes over there so it, it's really more of like a community gym oh, okay. and so people not you know pressed to you know people just do their workouts and everybody's there you, know, you got some guys who are like big name you know um bodybuilders or athletes or influencers so mm -hmm. i think people i think that's also a part of houston people just kind of respect everybody you know you may see you know, an, a, you know, an artist or somebody well known around Houston. You're just like, "What's up?" and you keep it moving. Okay, that's cool. When you say so, I mean, yeah, we um, I, I saw Fifty Cent at Twenty Four. Oh, for real? Yeah, okay, 50 okay. Cent and I um, Lil Kiki too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And those guys, you know, you can go out on like a Saturday night and run into you know Slim or Paul Wall or uh, Bun B. I mean, and I think that's the beauty of Houston that it's not like a city like where we, we got, you know, paparazzi or, you know, a bunch of groupies following people around. People just kind of <laughs> let you live your life. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah. Which I, th which I think is good. I mean, I would see James Harden out places or, you know, you go to Turkey Leg Hut, you can, you know, on a weekend, you can see somebody pretty mm -hmm. much. So, um, so that, that's always, that's always important. Um, well, how, how do you, how do you handle stress? I just work out. Um, I'm probably going to look into seeing a psychologist soon, mm -hmm. something like that. And, just play with my son. Yeah, yeah. Do you think, like, well, I guess we can get on that too. You know, I know I'm noticing a lot more black men are, are talking more about therapy, mm. uh, getting into therapy. I feel like I'm interviewing you, know, but, <laughs> I mean, but I mean, but do, do you, is that something you kind of have started to really think about? I um, I saw a psychologist when I was in high school. Mm -hmm. So it's nothing new. I'll just, 
I guess continue seeing her or whatever. So mm-hmm. it's not a big deal for me. Yeah. But I think I think it's become not as taboo because I think it used to be if someone said, you know, I'm going to talk to my therapist or have a therapist, people look at you like, what's wrong with you? Yeah, what's wrong with you? Now yeah. people are like, oh, you know, you, you're taking, you know, initiative to see about your mental health. And sometimes nothing has to be wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, but it can be that you want to just really check yourself and, you know, make sure you're balanced. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I don't personally right now have a therapist, um, but I definitely make sure I check in with like my brothers or check in with some people who are going to hold me accountable that I can be honest with. Because I think, you know, some of us, we just hold everything in and we mm-hmm. see each other. I ran into one of my friends the other day at the grocery store and he was just like, man, how's it, how's it going? How you doing? And I started saying, oh yeah, you know, work is good and da da da. He's like, no, how are you doing? Mm-hmm. And he likes, he stopped me and said, no, I want to listen. How are you doing? And it made me stop and say, man, I got to, I got to talk. I got to really be honest. But I think more of us have to do that with each other. When we call people, not just be like, Hey bro, what's up? you know, how the wife, how the kids, how, no, like, how are you doing? What's going on? Like, let's sit down and talk. And mm-hmm. I, I think that's important. Um, and that's a start for a lot of us. Yeah. That's, that's very, very important. Um, yeah. A lot of, I don't, I don't think a lot of us do that. You know, a lot of us kind of, we keep it kind of kind of surface and then something happens and then, you know, like the, the uh, young man Twitch, uh, you know, who, who committed suicide recently is like, now we want to have this conversation about mental health. And then we all go back to our, you know, we got we got to keep the conversation going. Mm-hmm. We really do. Charlemagne's always talking about it on, on the Breakfast Club. All yeah. The time. yeah, 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 yeah. And I mean, especially, you know, you know, I think black men, I think sometimes we we um, have to be strong. We have to be strong. We don't, you know, show our emotions. I think about my dad's generation. They really didn't show emotions. And our mm-hmm. granddad's generation is like, no, you don't cry. You don't you don't even talk about you know, anything sensitive. You and, and now I think we're getting to the point where it, it's okay to like show emotion. Mm. It's okay to talk about your feelings. Um, it's okay to not be okay. Mm. I've never seen my father cry before. Mm. Like to this day, I think he cried when my, when my mom gave birth to my sister and that was it. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I can be honest. I think I've seen my dad cry once and I think that was when he lost his mom or something like that. But I, in terms of like just... Over the years, man, I, I don't because I think that generation was sort of taught and just accustomed to just holding in your feelings. Mm-hmm. You're the strong one. Mm-hmm. And so now I think, you know, this next generation and, and, you know, your kids next generation, I think they'll be more open to sharing their feelings. Yeah, that'll be great. It'll be celebrated. Um, yeah, we also talked a little bit um, about kind of just, you know, networking. And I, and I know it's funny because I met you in, um, in at an event like yeah. what, what was, that was the. Uh, um. Macintosh, Macintosh. Yeah, yeah, Tiffany Macintosh's Tiffany McIntosh. event. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And so that that was a, a great event. Um, and I mean, I think and I met you there, but then, you know, I also realized we have, we knew some people in common because uh, LaMarcus Newman and his wife, Amber, mm-hmm. you know, Amber um, as well. So that that was kind of a, that was a great event. What'd you think about that? It was great. It was great. It brought all the entrepreneurs together, like mm-hmm. Chris Synagogue, um, Chris Synagogue. Um, yeah, Chris was there. I saw. Um, I saw T.J. Tajani. Who's T.J. The buddy. Tijani, I, I was trying to say his name. Yeah, uh, um, a lot of those. A lot of those guys. Um, <clears throat> and they've. Um, you know, but one thing I'll say about those guys and kind of can segue is that like um, those guys are out. They're they're not just you know they're out networking. They're mm-hmm. out all the time. I don't know if you see T.J. You see you know Jay Bradley. All those guys. They're always out in the community uh, networking. And, and I tell people that's super important. Like you got to be out. Um, to get the opportunities. Mm-hmm. I feel like sometimes people say, man, it's the same people in Houston doing everything, but sometimes it's the same people out making the moves. Chris is everywhere. He's mm-hmm. I see him at literally every event, like every big time where there's a celebrity, he's always there. Yeah, like, Chris is a man. Like he's been he's been really grinding. Uh um, like I, I don't know him as well, but I've gotten to know some of the other guys and they really, really have, you know, built a name for themselves in the mm-hmm. community and they're doing stuff in our community. You know, mm-hmm. TJ's building in third ward, Chris is doing stuff in fifth ward and around the community. So that's really been good to see. Yeah. I'm trying to be known as a, the South Park or Sunny side guy. Okay. So, so that, that's sort of, that's your, that's your area. Yeah. Okay. I'm buying up over there like crazy. I'm mm-hmm. trying to get by the end of this month, I should have eight houses over there. Wow, wow! And, and then where'd you, where'd you, where were you raised in Houston? I was raised on the side west side, West Belford and Farnsworth. Okay, okay, wow, yeah. yeah. Sun, that Sunnyside area is really, um, is really. I, I've gone to speak to a, at a few schools over there. It's really, I mean, it's it, the people over there. I even have a friend who bought a house over there. I forgot the name of the right off of Scott Street. It's like one of those side streets off Scott. Uh, McKinley or McKenzie, one of those streets. Okay. Yeah, but it's, I mean, it's a really nice house. I think more people are in, in, investing back into the community, you know, young people, young families moving back over there. Yeah, I want to have like a shoe drive soon. Like, I just want to give out like shoes to like all the uh, kids over there. 
Mm -hmm. um, I saw some kids barefooted at the gas station one time and I ain't like that. So I want to do that, just buy a bunch of shoes and just start giving them out. Mm -hmm. Like, real, I want you to be a part of that. Yeah, man, I, I definitely I definitely will do that. Um, how, how have you been able to, you know, and, and I can kind of talk a little bit about this as well, like, because I think that's one of the things I want to talk about was just kind of the, you know, building your brand and networking. How, do, how have you found that you've been able to do that kind of with, with real estate in Houston? Just trying to, I just been trying to network. Um, I'm trying to go to like to every real estate event or every entrepreneur event. Um, just like, like events, like how, how like with Chris and then TJ's event that they just had and then Tiffany's event, just trying to be at all events and, and network to everybody. Mm -hmm. um, I had the Newmans on the podcast. I'm trying to have everybody on the podcast, all the rappers and basketball players and entrepreneurs. Yeah. It's like everybody from the community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, man. That, Podcasting is a great way to uh, network. Yeah, yeah. It's great with a network and, you know, and people, a lot of people like to talk and, and, yeah. you know, and also gets people, you know, to share, share their perspective in a, in a longer format. Um, and this, this different from just, you know, meeting people at an event, but I always talk about, you know, going to events and meeting people and networking and, um, always tell people, you know, one of the things that's helped me out a lot um, is, you know, truly making a connection with people mm -hmm. and not necessarily looking just for the transaction. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people, when they meet you, they want something, right? They asking you for something. Hey man, can we, let's, let's do this. You know, exactly. or, I tell people the best way to really, um, you know, make connections with people is to really never ask for anything, you know, just really may have a conversation. Hey, where are you from? You know, um, oh, you, you grew up in Atlanta. Oh yeah, my sister lives in Atlanta. Before you know it, you made a connection with somebody, but so many people miss the opportunity because they go in and they ask for something right away. And, um, and you know that, that happens a lot. Mm. People probably just want something exactly, and they're not willing to actually have the conversation, make the connection. So that's really important. Um, that's what I've learned. Okay. Um, you want to end it right there or you want to, you want to, yeah, I mean, that's good. I was just trying to, you know, <laughs> offer some, offer some more stuff, you know, uh, whatever. I, I, I usually ask the either or question. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like by real estate or stocks and stuff like that. And then we'll, we'll okay. End it right there. Okay. All right. Um, uh, rental properties or Airbnbs. Uh, well, right now I'll probably say Airbnbs for what I'm, what I'm being told. Okay. Uh, stocks or NFTs? Right now I'm mostly in stocks. Okay. Stocks or crypto? Ooh, stocks right now. Stocks right now? Yeah. I, I, I just, that crypto been going crazy lately. I, I just, it's all over the place. So, okay. so you, you stop buying crypto. I'm just right now in, in Bitcoin mainly. And I kind of just pulled out of the rest for now. Okay. Okay. That's cool. That's on, so. Did you have any um like like Doge or any of that? I did, you know, I got burned on Doge. You got both for but real? I got burned on the Doge, man. So I remember when like, you know, I one of my really good friends, when when Doge was like hella low, it was super low. He was like, man, put in some money. Just put in like, you know, two thousand dollars. And I was like, nah, nah. And then one day it just shot up. And yeah. he made like six figures overnight on just just that put in two thousand dollars or whatever it was. Um but anyway, I put it in when it was like on the rise and then it crashed. It crashed. So I lost money on Doge. So you're waiting for it to get to a dollar? Nah, I kind of pulled out and just took my losses because uh. it was going too low. So I, I pulled out a Doge. Um, so I'm just right now in Bitcoin. I, I I learned with some of those, you just can't chase like the GameStop, the Bitcoin. I mean, the Doge coin. You just got to kind of okay wait for wait for the next opportunity. If you miss the boat, wait for the next one. Okay, that's cool. Um. Two million dollars or a rental property? Mm. Depends on where the rental property is, but I, I say I'll go with my two million for now. Okay. Um, money or equity? Equity. A million followers or a rental property? Uh, I think you can make a money. You can make a lot of money off that million dollars if you know what you a million followers if you know what you're doing. So I would say a million followers. Because I think that you can you can stall, you can also monetize that if you know what you're doing, not just have a million just to show yourself, but if you know what you're doing and you got something to sell. Okay. Sorry, I had to give all these caveats, but you know. <laughs> Tour or Airbnb? I'm sorry. Tour or Airbnb? Uh, I I don't I'll say I, I know most about Air, the Airbnb, Airbnb. So yeah. Okay, so that's something you're about to get into. Um, you know, a couple of my friends are. I got like four friends that are doing it, so they've been telling me a little bit about it. I'm not in it yet. What about you? Um, I, we had one and then it, we just, we just let it go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've got like three or four friends who they, they running it, including TJ. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. Um, biz, business account or regular checking account? 
Can you have both? Yeah, you can have both. Yeah, I have. I mean, I think both of them are important, right? You yeah, know, yeah. You need both. You need a savings account too. Yeah, yeah. You, you need do. all the accounts. Yeah, you do. You do. Um, LLC or S corp? Um. Well, I just have an LLC uh, right LLC. now, so I mean, you know, I'm. You're building to the S corp. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, Atlanta or Houston? Oh man, I thought you were gonna ask me that. <laughs> you know what? Let me let me let me preface this by saying. I've been in Houston six years. I love Houston. I think it is a great city. Um, I think Houston people are more just real, more down to earth. Um, but I'll say Atlanta, the only advantage I say about Atlanta is that I think it is a little bit more creative. Mm -hmm. um, people are a little bit more like, you know, on the move. I mean, you think about it, Atlanta, like had the Olympics back in 96. So it's mm -hmm. always, it's sort of years ahead in terms of hosting big events and like just um, the music and things like that. But Houston, I feel like people here, like you just don't get much better than like Houston people. Okay. Oh, that's, that's, what would you say? That's a great answer. That's a great yeah. Answer. Houston people. I, I mean, it's just the, 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 the vibe here. Um, I always tell people, you know, Houston, you can drive up in anything. You can wear anything. Don't nobody care. Atlanta, I think it's a little more of a show. Like Black Hollywood? Yeah, it's like, you know, it, it is more. But that's also part of the industry there. Like, mm -hmm. there is a lot more industry in Atlanta. Uh, but I would say that here you can just kind of come as you are. And uh, people kind of, you know, appreciate that. But if, you, if you're if you an an actor, uh, you know, a model, a dancer, or you looking to be in the creative arts, I would say Atlanta might be more of a move for you. But if you're just looking to come live a good life, be around some good folks, a diverse, you know, group of people. Houston would be the spot. In fact, a lot of people I feel like are trying to move to Houston right now. Yeah, they are. We get a lot of people from California. Yeah. The rents, the rents California, in the house are so much People from New York. I know people from New York who like, you know, during COVID, they couldn't afford or their industry closed. They're like, all right, let me find somewhere else, you know. So what would you say? Have you been to Atlanta? I've been in Atlanta like one time for an event. Yeah. It was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, I think, I think, I think my podcast would have jumped a little bit more if I was over there. Yeah, why you say that? You feel like you get more support? Um, um I mean, I don't want to say that. <laughs> I mean, it, no, no, say it, no, no. It's, 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 it's more celebrities, and I feel like people are more, I got like a lot of people from Atlanta come on the podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like like Maddie J, Zoda Goat, David Shans. Mm -hmm. um, out here, they're kind of like, it's like up and down. They, got, they, they, it's harder to get people? I believe so. Mm. I believe so. I think they're, they're just they're just so used to doing podcasts over there, and they're just like whatever. They're, they just yeah. But over here, it's like more like. Well, I, I think I think uh, another thing that people <clears throat> say about Houston is that we're we're this city that's great, but we don't have to tell you that we're great. Mm. And so a lot of people don't necessarily like to be in the spotlight seen as much. Um, I know they've cast a lot of the shows they cast. They tried to do Love and Hip Hop here. They tried to do uh, Real Housewives of Houston. Uh, they tried to do Basketball Wives here. And none of the shows worked. They mm -hmm. never made it past the pilot phase, uh, from what I'm told, because like Houston just, it just didn't give that you know Hollywood. that Hollywood and, and a lot of people don't want their business out there. These mm -hmm. basketball wives in Houston, they don't want they don't want their their uh, lives out there. Um, and, and so I do think that there's a lot of that, even with you know, sort of some of the artists. They don't necessarily they just want to live their lives in Houston. Mm -hmm. They don't want to be bothered. They don't want to necessarily be seen as much. Um, they'll come out a few times a year, so I, I feel like that's part of it. There's not as much of a like see me and you know show me as much. Thank you, thank you, man. Yeah. I'm, I'm in it right there. Yeah, man, I know I talked a lot, but hey, appreciate you. Yeah. <laughs>